Hey guys, this is Aaron. This is part three of Welcome to Dynamic Components. If you haven't seen the first two, part one and part two should be linked to down in the description. In those, we covered the basics of deforming geometry, using the scale tool, and changing information dynamic component from user interface. In this one, we're going to talk about using the interact tool. If you haven't seen the interact tool, it's a little cursor of a finger that you can use to toggle information inside of dynamic components. We're going to take a look at programming that right now. All right, so for this one, this video is going to be a little different from the last couple because we're not going to start by drawing a box. Instead, we're going to use Mark here. So Mark is a component. He's not a dynamic component. If I pick on him, you can see that he, his information does show up in both attributes and options, but you can see they're both empty. So any component can become a dynamic component. It's not, not something special when you first create it. A dynamic component is just a component with an attribute somewhere inside of it. So right now, Mark's just a standard component, nothing there. He is a face me component. So you can see as I spin around, he always faces the camera. That is a functionality of components, not dynamic components. If you're looking for more information on Always Face Camera, check out our YouTube channel and search for Face Me or Always Face Camera. We've done a couple of videos on that in the past. What we're going to do with Mark is we're going to show how to use the Interact tool. This is the Interact tool right here. It's a little finger button. I added it to my toolbar at the top. And what this lets you do is when you hover over a dynamic component, it lets you click on it and make changes. In this case, like I said, Mark is a component, but not a dynamic component. So when I hover over him, I get the little anti symbol right there. That means I can click as much as I want. It's not going to do anything to Mark. So we're going to go ahead and add some information to Mark. So I'm just going to, with him selected right now, I'm going to come over here and we need to add an attribute to change with the interact tool. So we haven't really touched on it, but this component info at the top, name, summary, description, item code, is really just text data you can put into a dynamic component, very similar actually to what's in entity info. Position is the location, size we've played with a lot. It's the size of the, the overall uh, container of the geometry. And then rotation, we'll, we'll probably touch on rotation and position in a further video. We're going to look at some behaviors down here. We've touched on a couple of these. I want to go to this one that we haven't done yet, which is hidden. And I'm going to click on hidden. Hidden's pretty simple. Hidden has two values. Hidden is a true or a false. So right now, if I type true, hit enter, mark goes away. I come in here and I type false, mark comes back. It's that simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie interactivity to that value. I'm going to hit add attribute again, and I'm going to use on click. On click says when this is clicked on with the interact tool, do this. So we are going to set hidden to one value or another based on when mark is clicked on. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to type the word set, open parentheses, and then in quotes, I'm going to type hidden, end quotes. If I'm setting a value for a specific uh, behavior here, I do have to put that in quotes. This is a name of something. Values, I don't have to put into quotes. I don't want to put into quotes. So I'm going to type true, not in quotes, comma, false, also not in quotes, and end parentheses. And then to finish it, I'm going to hit enter. Now, if I come grab my interact tool, I hover over mark, look at, see the change to my cursor there? a little star on the fingertip, that says I'm on something that can actually be changed by the interact tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click, <gasps> Mark's gone. The good thing about this is it does recognize that he's still here so I can click to bring him back. I don't have to go turn hidden geometry or anything like that. But now I can just click on Mark and have him come and go just by clicking him. So that's basically how the on click function works. This is pretty basic. You can get pretty uh, deep into how you want to use the on click, but we're just doing it to toggle one thing or another. So what if we want to do more than just toggle one thing on or off? What if we want to actually cycle through multiple options? Well, I'm glad I asked. What I want to do is I want to change Mark's pants so that when I click on them, they'll change color. So the first thing I have to do is when I set a, a property here for Mark, it changes everything that's in the container that Mark's in. 
So everything in here gets value set based on whatever's here. If I want to affect just a portion of mark, I have to make that its own component, or in this case, a subcomponent. So what I'm going to want to do is come into mark, double click to enter this, and I want to take his pants and make them a separate component inside of the mark component. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to pick all of the pieces of the, what is this, it's not really a brown, it's a, a gray, gray pants, grayish, yeah they're grayish. I'm going to select all the surfaces of the gray of his pants. Um, and then when I have them selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say make component and I'm going to call them pants. Now watch what happens in my component attributes when I hit enter. I now have my mark component up here and then a subcomponent that is Mark's pants. So I could do the same thing if I wanted to have his, his shirt change or his skin color or hair, I could make each of those components also. Because they're nested inside the larger component, it doesn't affect anything like the face me, just where it is inside of attributes. So I'm gonna come in here and set some attributes for his pants. Before I do that though, I'm gonna get rid of the on click for Mark. Cause right now, if I click anywhere in Mark, including subcomponents, it's gonna to toggle visibility. So I'm gonna come here and to get rid of a component, I just click on the name, then hit minus, name, and then hit minus. There's a little warning there in case you accidentally delete something you didn't mean to. So I'm gonna add an attribute here. This is what we did on the very first one is material. And I'm gonna start by setting it to red. And I'm gonna hit enter. But wait a minute, I just said his pants red and they didn't turn to red, why is that? Because this is something we've also covered in skill builders in the past. Josh did a video on this. The difference between coloring a container and coloring surfaces. So there is one value that's put on the outside of a container of a thing and then each surface on the inside can have a color as well. So if I click in here, each of these surfaces is already painted with that gray color. So what I have to do is I have to remove that. So I'm gonna grab my paint bucket tool, grab my default color, that's this one right here, and just paint that onto his pants. Now look what happens as soon as I do that, it turns red. Because I told it anything in this component that doesn't have another color associated with it, make red. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint everything with this default material like that. All right, looks good. So that's how I would just make his pants red with dynamic components, but we wanna interact and change. So let's do that. Let's add another attribute. This one's gonna be on click. And just very similar to what we did last time, I'm going to set and then in quotes, material, end quotes, comma. So last time I said, if you're setting uh, a hard-coded value, like we said true, false, I didn't want to put that inside of quotes. This isn't a hard-coded value. This is actually potentially a number of a color or name of a color or name of a material. So I do actually want to put this text value inside of quotes. So I'm gonna put quotes, red, end quotes, comma, Let's go green, end quotes, comma, quotes, yellow, end quotes, and then parentheses. And then I'll hit enter. Now, what should happen is when I come with my interact tool, first off, I should get a star if I hover over his pants. Woo, so far, so good. Now, if I click, it should change this value from red to green. Let's see what happens. <gasps> it worked. Now if I click again, it should change from green to yellow. One more click should take it back to red. Nice. Now let's say hypothetically I made a mistake. I just want to show you guys this because a big part of being good with programming subcomponents is debugging. So what would happen right now if I had misspelled material? Or let's say I put in materials. The name of this value is not materials, it is material. So this is not something that exists anywhere in this dynamic component. So when I hit enter, when I come in here and when I click on his pants, I still get that little star because I, I did set up an on-click correctly. 
Rather than changing this material value to green, it's going to set the value materials to green. But there is no material, so what's going to happen? Well, watch. When I click, it creates a brand new custom attribute called materials, and now it's going to toggle that value through all those options. So it's doing exactly... This is funny because it's, it's very easy as you're programming these things to go, oh, I told it to do something, it's doing something different. Nine out of ten times it's doing exactly what you told it to do, it just didn't understand what you were telling it or how you were telling it to do that. So in this case, this is an easy enough fix, I'd come in, get rid of my S, select my, whoops, I forgot to hit enter, enter, grab my materials and delete that, yes. And now if I come in and click on his pants, I can toggle through the colors. I think that yellow is really something special. So there you go. That is a introductory or welcome session on using the on click in dynamic components. If you like that, go ahead and click like down below and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified next time we create a video. We create a video like this a couple times a week and uh, this particular session, this dynamic component thing, is probably going to be a couple videos longer and you'll be notified if you're subscribed. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. This whole series was created because somebody, actually multiple somebodies, asked us to create skill builders on dynamic components. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.